Hello, this is Mr. Lowry, and today's objective is 3.8c. We will analyze plot elements of a story by identifying the sequence of events. Remember, sequence of events is what um, we have when we filled out the boxes for the major events of the, the movie Pip. And then we practiced with the words, the identifying the sequencing or transition words like next, after, before, and then, as you'll see in questions that regard sequencing, like what did the class see right before they ate lunch. <clears throat> so here's another good one, like a question. Uh, Alan cleaned his room today. He started by pick him up all, picking up all his dirty clothes and putting them in the laundry hamper. Then he put away all of his games and toys. Next, he straightened the books on his shelf. After that, he made his bed. The last thing he did was to vacuum the carpet. What did Alan do right before he made his bed? It says right here, after that he made his bed. So we need to identify what did he do before that. Before he made his bed? He straightened the books on his bookshelf. So that would be the answer. And I'll do some more in the uh, in the class tomorrow <clears throat> or today. I guess you're watching this video today. Also, remember when you see the sequencing questions on the test, you'll see the boxes where you just need to put in what goes in this box, knowing that this box, whatever this event is, is before this event, but after this event. So it says, Emma had a slumber party at her house last night. First, the girls ate pizza for dinner. After dinner, they played some games. Then, they got into their pajamas and watched a movie. They got into their sleeping bags after the movie, but they could not stop talking and laughing. Finally, they all fell asleep around midnight. And again, what happened here? What happened right before they got into their sleeping bags? <clears throat> I'm going to post this video in the Google Classroom for the assignment, but to talk about the historical setting of the story that we're going to read, we're going to be reading about <clears throat> a time period that was called Jim Crow Laws, when black people were treated differently from white people. Um, there's signs here to say that they, they couldn't drink from the same water fountain as white people. They couldn't use the same bathrooms as white people. They couldn't use the same, uh, they couldn't eat in the same restaurants. And this is a very important word we call, we do call it racism and discrimination. Discrimination is just when you're being treated unfairly. You are treated unfairly or not fairly due to your race or skin color. <clears throat> so what ended up happening was the white schools were a lot better than the black schools. They had a lot more money, better books. So on, obviously white people got a better education. But the worst part of Jim Crow laws when they first came around was that black people were not given the right to vote. And <clears throat> they didn't even get to go to school for many years. It wasn't until like the last 50 years we can say that black people were actually allowed to go to school and learn to read. Again, that's very important to the plot of the story that we're going to read. <clears throat> Again, it's a historical fiction, which is a historical fiction has characters that live in a setting that is a real place. It can be real people or fictional characters. We will have fictional characters. But like the Titanic was something that really happened, Jim Crow laws is something that really happened, that were laws that discriminated against black people and made their life unfair 
and much more difficult. <clears throat> but other than that, we will. If, uh, the author's purpose is to entertain you with events from the past, historical, just meaning from the past. Anytime we're talking about history or historical events, it's from something that happened in the past. Some of the vocabulary we have figured, which means believed or thought. Like my mom figured I would have homework today, so she asked to see my backpack. The phrase I figured as much means I thought so. You might hear people say that. Figured. Patience, the ability to wait without getting upset. Like fishing takes a lot of patience. You have to wait for the fish to bite your hook. I don't have the patience for fishing. I did when I was younger. <clears throat> Complain means to express a feeling of unhappiness about something. Like my mom always got upset when I complained about my food. That looks, that's little Mr. Lowry right there who does not want to use vegetables unless they have cheese on them. <clears throat> and the title is Granddaddy's Turn, A Journey to the Ballot Box. Do you know what a ballot box is? A ballot box is a place or a box where you would put your vote to vote in an election. <clears throat> where we lived, I didn't need an alarm clock. I woke up to the cock a doodle doo of my pet rooster and the chucka 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 of my granddaddy's tractor. Hurry up, boy, he would shout. I'm coming, granddaddy, I'd say. We got work to do, my granddaddy would say. Hard work will keep you out of trouble. I guess he figured I was going to get in a whole passel of trouble because he sure gave me lots of chores. I need to remind the students to ask them what the word passel means in context. <clears throat> also, what are these examples of? Do you remember when we have words that represent sounds? Oh, and describe the setting of the story. Who is the narrator? The narrator is the person who's telling the story. We fed the animals, we milked the cows, and we worked in the fields. My granddaddy was big, was a big strong man who always said he didn't take nothing off nobody. He could do anything, plow fields, chop wood, and dig fence posts, all without breaking a sweat. Not like me. Sometimes when I did my chores, I made so much sweat, it was like I was raining. <clears throat> we worked together a lot, but we played a lot too. We really loved to go fishing. Sometimes I'd complain when I didn't get a bite right away, but my granddaddy always said, Patience, son, patience. Use context clues around the sentence to determine the meaning of the phrase right away. You have the words right away. Then you have Grandpa telling him to be patient. One morning while we were eating breakfast, my grandmother brought out a surprise for my granddaddy. She had cleaned and ironed his suit. I didn't understand that since he only wore his suit to church, and it wasn't a church day. It's our time, and you got to look your best, my grandma said. My granddaddy was so excited, he leaped up from the table and gave her a big hug. What's going on, granddaddy, I asked. You'll see, he said with a big beaming smile. I didn't like neckties too much, but since my granddaddy was wearing one, I guess I was too. Y'all be careful now, my grandma said, and don't forget to take pictures, she said as she handed my granddaddy the camera. Explain why the narrator is surprised when his grandmother brings out his grandfather's suit. One morning, well, oh, this is the same page, I'm sorry. This time I'm using the same 
page 71, I believe, or nope, sorry, 69, <clears throat> and you're going to fill in the empty box. We walked and walked. It seemed like a hundred miles. I asked my granddaddy where we were going again. Patience, son, patience, he reminded me with a smile. Oh boy, I thought, we must be going to the county fair. I walked faster. I couldn't wait to get there. I could almost hear the music and smell the barbecue. Where are all the rides and animals? I asked my granddaddy. Why does the narrator ask granddaddy where all the rides and animals are on page 70? <clears throat> He laughed and said, What are you talking about, son? I thought we were going to the county fair, I said. Take a look around, my granddaddy said. This is better than any old fair. Then I saw the vote here sign and shouted to my granddaddy, Are you voting today? Yes, I am, my granddaddy proudly replied. Where are the narrator and his grandfather going on page 71? And then again on the same page, explain why the narrator and his grandpa are, it should say there, <clears throat> so excited that he's going to vote on page 71. Why are the characters so excited? Why does he need to bring a camera? That's it of the video. Thank you for listening. See you soon.